Hi everybody, Ryan here from Cold Harbor Supply and today we're going to be talking about what's inside this PVS-14, which is going to be an NNVT tube. So there's never been a better time to get to night vision than now. It's more accessible, there's so many more options for different housings, accessories, and there's a great and growing ecosystem and community of people using these things. And we wanted to bring that ceiling down a little bit to make it a little bit more accessible for real analog night vision. So not digital night vision, love you guys out there doing crazy digital stuff, but real analog night vision with no lag and uh, you know actual image intensification. So what are NNVT tubes? Who's NNVT and are these any good? So these tubes, full disclosure, are made in China. NNVT, they're relatively new to the international market for night vision. However, they've been making night vision tubes for quite a long time now. From what I hear online as well, people say, and you can correct me in the comments if I got this wrong, people say that these are based off of Photonis' older technology, like the X-D4, the XR5. However, they still provide pretty good performance at a much lower price point than Photonis tubes or equivalent tubes. What's the point of that, right? Why would you pay for something worse? Well, night vision, as most people know, is not a cheap hobby to get into, or it's not cheap to get into if you need it for professional use. However, we aim to kind of bring that cost down slightly or increase your budget for other things with these tubes. So let's get into the first part, which is gonna be testing these tubes out and seeing what kind of image they produce. Full disclosure, just to release our testing parameters out, this is not a be all end all test. You know, we didn't test every condition, every temperature out there. Just a quick use test in some environments that people may use. We went into a trail uh, with a lot of dark forest cover and we also tested this in a Hoffman machine to show off the image in a more clinical laboratory setting. Now we have three tubes with us and they've all been fitted in these proper Carson PVS-14 housings with Carson rear and front lenses so you can ensure that you're getting the best image possible. As well, we're using a cool testing rig which I'm gonna bring out. Uh, there's the Sony A7 III that's on, A7S III, sorry, that's filming this video right now, but we also have a Sony A7 III. Now this doesn't have the fancy 10-bit color if you're a camera guy like the A7S III or their new cameras, but it doesn't really matter because nods are monochromatic anyways. But this can offer a pretty good image, much better than a cell phone. It doesn't have any weird AI processing stuff. All of these images were captured, or sorry, all of these videos were captured with the proper and consistent camera settings. We're using HLG as the color profile. They've been captured with the same color temperature, so you're not seeing any weird variations in tint. It's approximately 5,500K, I believe. Uh, I'm gonna post the video specs probably right here that you can kind of see, because I don't remember off the top of my head, but I did write them down. So in this battle royale of PVS-14s, we have three intensifiers that we're gonna go over. We're gonna go over our control first, which is gonna be this PVS-14 in a Carson housing, like I said earlier. This is a echo tube with the specs of 9,207 gain, 26.24 SNR with a resolution of 67 and an EBI of 0 0.05, now converted for US units, that's gonna be 0 0.5. So this tube's FOM is going to be 1,758. So the second tube we're testing is one that we've carried in the past and it's a great tube, but we're probably gonna phase it out for the NNVT4 auto gated and that's gonna be the NNVT5. Now this tube isn't auto-gated, it still can protect against bright light sources, but what the auto-gating really helps with is the highlight resolution. But we're going to go over the specs of this and we're going to compare it to see if that little bit of a FOM decrease to the NNVT4 makes an actual usable difference. So this tube specs, or it has a gain of 10,000, it has a signal to noise ratio of 27.3, it has a resolution of 64, and it has an EBI of 0 0.13 converted to US, that's 1.3 and it has about 1,747 FOM. So, might be a little bit higher or very similar to the Echo tube, but we're gonna see those performances, that performance difference in the way these are constructed in our test soon. The last tube and the one that we're kind of talking about today and the one that we're gonna carry is going to be the NNVT4 auto gated. So this tube has a gain of 10,700. It has an SNR of 24.58. It has a resolution of 64 and an EBI of 0 0.13 converted into US units of 1.3. This unit's FOM is going to be 1,573. So there you have it, the three tubes that we're gonna be testing. So the first test we're gonna be doing is going to be putting this in the Hoffman machine, putting the camera on it and looking at the resolution chart and checking out the image there. And we're gonna see how well these tubes render these lines at lower levels of light. 
So we've hooked up all of these devices to the Hoffman machine, and what this machine allows us to do is observe the raw performance of the night vision tubes without any outside interference, such as changing light conditions or temperature. It's a much more clinical test. I'm manually controlling the amount of light the Hoffman outputs, starting at 1.5 millifoot Lamberts, which is the Hoffman's default highlight level, down to 0.003 millifoot Lamberts, which is the Hoffman's default low light level. The tubes are displaying a line chart here, which you can think of as an eye chart, but for knots. What we're looking for is how well the tube resolves the fine details, such as the tiny lines and the numbers, as the light levels go down. As the light levels go down, as you can plainly see, you will notice the image become obviously dimmer, as well as an increase of noise. One thing to note is the specs posted on the top left. You might notice the Photonis, while being the most expensive of the bunch, actually has the lowest gain out of the three intensifiers by what some may consider a significant margin. An interpretation of this, just by looking at the spec sheet, is the Photonis may produce a darker, less usable image. However, the test shows that the image from the Photonis, while being perhaps initially darker, actually produces a more detailed image when the light levels get significantly lower. This is because the Photonis has a better MTF, or modular transfer function, which in layman's terms is the major characteristic that illustrates how well the device can reproduce contrast of an observed scene. So, in even more layman's terms, it's just going to be the contrast of the tube. So while the gain is lower, the ability to render contrast is greater. And from the images you can see, as the light levels get lower, the Photonis seems to produce the image with the greatest differentiation between the lightest parts of the image, such as the blank background and the lines and black squares. So the point of this is it's important not to look at tube specs in a vacuum and to observe the overall image quality of the device. As the light levels get lower, we'll let the results speak for themselves. While the Photonis is leading the pack, in my opinion, the two NNVT tubes are not far behind in image quality and are still able to produce and resolve details to quite a similar degree, especially given their price point. As we get into the extreme low light parts over here, we notice that there's a lot of noise and it's going to be pretty hard to tell anything apart from each other. In these cases, any device is going to need some form of supplemental IR illumination to be able to resolve details. All right, enough with the lab tests. Let's move on to some real world environments. So first we're going to show the differences between auto gated and not gated tubes. So what auto gating does is it quickly pulses the tube's power supply on and off to preserve the quality of the image if it gets hit with a dynamic light source. It protects the image as well, it protects the tube from bright light damage, but it's not the only way it can protect itself. The NNVT5, while not having auto gating, is still protected against bright light damage using bright source protection or lowering the voltage of the photocathode, uh, but it does this at greater cost of clarity to the image. So a quick way to see if your tube is gated or not is to put it in front of something with a refresh rate like a monitor. And as you can see here, the NNVT4AG is gated, and you can see this in the frequency of the auto gating with the pulsing on the monitor compared to the NNVT5, which had a static image. Now the NNVT5 is also perfectly focused, but because the resolution has to drop significantly in this bright light source, the text on the image is not very legible. It's pretty much just a giant blur. Whereas the NNVT4, the text is slightly legible through the pulsing and the resolution is preserved. Photonis tubes are not only auto-gated, but they feature what's called ultra-fast auto-gating. As you can see here with the frequency of the tube being much faster than the NNVT4AG. Photonis claims that this technology allows the users to have less disruptions to their image, it maintains a higher resolution with dynamic light sources, and it's more reactive to things like street lights, lamps, muzzle flashes, explosions, what have you. And this explains the Photonis famous mixed lighting condition performance over all other brands of tubes. Both images have legible text, but I would say the Photonis tube seems to be a little bit sharper here because of that ultra-fast auto-gating preserving the resolution to a greater degree than the NNVT4's slower auto-gating. So we're not looking at monitors all the time, so let's look at how this performs in a bright urban environment. Now, in this case, you might use nods to look inside a person's house or look inside an alleyway. However, you're going to be around lots of sources of light in urban and suburban settings. So in this case, the FOM of the NNVT4AG is actually lower than the NNVT5, so one might expect better performance from the 5. But the 5's image is worse due to the fact that the tube has to drop resolution versus the auto-gated tube in the 4AG. And this is noticeable on the detail in the rear buildings where the windows are not as sharp, the lines in the buildings are not as sharp, and the reduction in ability to resolve contrast in dynamic lighting conditions. And you can see this on the street where all the street lights in the 5's image are bloomed out. Whereas in the 4's image, you can actually make out some parts of the street in comparison to the street lights and the cars. 
you can see the auto gating working also in the bottom right hand corner of the image of the NNVT 4AG near this construction light. Here with the NNVT 4AG versus the Photonis Echo, you can see both tubes are very good at preserving as much resolution they can, so both images are decently clear. The Photonis is different with its ultra fast auto gating, allow it to have a far less perceptible auto gating frequency than the NNVT 4. But this was captured with a camera. I wasn't able to notice this with my eye while looking at this scene, and you might not notice the difference either. Uh, but because it's captured with a camera, it's something to note. While the Photonis tube has what I would say a richer and more punchy image, and you can see this in some of the dark and light parts of the building, the NNVT 4 actually performs quite admirably to its European counterpart. In this round of testing, we're bringing the tubes to an outdoor environment. In this case, we're on a trail away from urban areas and a section with a decent amount of canopy cover later in the video to compare how the intensifiers perform in low light environments. So in this scene, we're overlooking a park with some mild light pollution on a clear night with almost zero moon. We have the bottom image punched into an area with a lot of detail to resolve, including a park bench, and we're focusing the device here to show that we're actually focusing it. We're not just making one device blurry or over the other. This is pretty hard because you're capturing an image of an image. Uh, in this image, I would consider the difference between the 5 and the 4 very negligible. Although the 5 might have a slight bomb advantage, I can't really tell the difference between these two images other than the tint of the tubes, which will vary between all different tubes. When we're comparing between the Photonis and the NNVT 4AG, we can see again, because of the better contrast the Photonis produces, you get a bit of a punchier image with better definition in the tree trunks, which appear nice and dark, and the extreme dark areas of the forest, and it gives you a bit of a better sense of depth. The NNVT for some people might appear to be more washed out, but for some people it might appear to be brighter. This is a very personal preference. Overall, I would say the intensification of the images are quite similar. On one part where the Photonis tube is going to have a noticeable advantage is in the areas near the sky and the canopy of the forest. As you can see, there's some fringing on the top edges of the trees on the NNVT 4AG, as well as the NNVT 5 in the previous shot. However, this slight fringing and glow on the tops of the trees is probably not caused by any lens issues. We're using Carson lenses for all of our units. It's likely the way that the NNVT resolves these different areas. The Photonis tube has a much better transition between sky and trees. It's a much harder transition and affords the viewer slightly better contrast yet again, especially in the layers of the canopies of the trees. For aviation purposes, this is definitely gonna be a consideration. However, for ground usage, this is unlikely to cause any real issues. In our realistic low light test, I took this out with a friend of mine to a fairly canopied part of the trail, it's very dark, barely could see the hand in front of my face, and asked him to walk around to see how well this tube does at IDing a human in the dark in a natural environment. I had him walk through and near the trees to see how well he would do, and I'll let the results here speak for themselves. Being in a dark forest and environment with little mood, clown cover, or heavy canopy is going to be a challenging environment for any night vision device, and it's highly recommended to have some form of supplemental illumination in these cases. Compared to the Photonis tube, the NNVT performs quite well. The Photonis tube still has the advantage again in contrast. You can see that in the trail and in the trees as well as the trunks in front of you, they're a bit more defined. But because the specs are very similar on these two tubes, they're very similar in performance. One thing to note, however, when it comes to tube choice is the Photonis tubes cap out, at least for the standard Photonis, at around 2000 FOM. When the SNR approaches 30 and the resolution is around 67, you will start to notice a difference in the clarity of images in low light conditions with different Photonis tubes. But for these two tubes in particular, it's quite comparable. So there you have it. According to our tests and a bit of use that we have in this video, NAVTs do seem to perform pretty good, especially for their price range. Now you're going to lose out on some features that the Echo has. Better auto gain, higher contrast because of better MTF, but with those savings, what does that get you? We like to think of night vision pretty holistically. So the best night vision is going to be the one you have. You can obviously hold a pair of nods like this or a mono up like this up to your eye, but that's not really going to be the most ideal way to use it. What that little bit of extra leeway in your budget allows you to do if you pick an NVT tube and you cut there is you actually can you know, afford a mount on your head if that's something that's a bit tight. You can afford a better helmet with better pads if that's something that you wanna do. You can afford to put a red dot on your rifle. You can afford to put a red dot on your pistol so you can actually use your nods with your equipment. Another consideration is obviously a mount and an arm combo. 
if you've ever owned a monocular, you'll know that these don't come with a way to mount them. That little bit of extra budget does give you room to afford a mount and afford an arm, a good one too. For binocular users out here, so this is a set of Aeternus. This is really popular with NNVTs because the housing itself is quite affordable. It's a very rigid, fixed binocular. But combining this with NNVTs allows you room in the budget to have other things. So already you have two eyes to see, so you're kind of in a more comfortable stereoscopic experience compared to mono users. But you're still going under $4,000 per eye for NNVTs in a binocular housing. What that gets you is now you can buy a Cotty, like this Jerry C2. Now, if you clip this onto your binocular, the pricing on our website currently, this still comes under a lot of the Photonis offerings, and now you have enhanced detection range. Even though the night vision image may slightly be compromised, you can actually see more with NNVTs and a Cotty than you can with Photonis tubes 2000 whatever FOM if you're in the middle of the dark forest. So it really depends on your budget. It really depends on the considerations you're going for when you're picking your device. And we're really glad to help you out with anything you need. So just send us an email or a message or comment down below and we'll see what we can do. But NNVT tubes seem to be the key to opening the Nod market up a little bit more, offering good competitive tubes to people that have slightly tighter budgets than everybody else and allowing you options to actually trick out your device with that little bit of money left over for something that offers either different capabilities or in some cases more capabilities augmented with thermal devices. So that's going to be everything for you guys today. Thanks for listening everybody. I know it was a long one with a lot of comparison videos, uh, but we do like to get this information out there and we do like being as transparent as possible to our user base. So if you like this, you know, subscribe, like, whatever, all that cool stuff, and we will see you on the next one.